strain is actually called Blueberry Train Wreck. As a consultant prepared our marijuana smoking lab, three volunteers each took a practice run on a course set up by the Thurston County Sheriff's Office designed to test their basic driving skills. In the car with them is Cascade Driving School instructor Mike Jackson, who has a brake on his side of the vehicle for safety. I can either grab the wheel or I can touch the brake and bring him to a safe stop. Our first volunteer, Addie, is a 27-year-old medical marijuana patient and heavy daily user who had smoked some pot prior to arriving. A blood test before our experiment began showed she came to the track already three times the new legal limit for driving under the influence of marijuana. The limit is five nanograms. She was at nearly 16 nanograms. While learning the course, Addie turned too sharp at a stop sign and clipped one of our cameras. But the instructor told us her driving was actually fine. Our second volunteer is 34-year-old Dylan, who uses pot on weekends. An initial test showed no marijuana in his system. Finally, we have 56-year-old Jeff, who uses only occasionally. He also started out with no detectable pot in his body. All right. Next, we had the volunteers start smoking marijuana. We gave them each three-tenths of a gram of pot to smoke. And from the light to the heavy user, ask them how they felt. Feeling really buzzed. Yeah. Relaxed and buzzed. Now they still feel normal. Back behind the wheel for another lap, Addie drove a bit slower than she should and at one point struck a traffic cone. Oh, I hit a cone. I see it in the rear view mirror. Ah! A blood test would later show Addie was driving at seven times the legal limit for pot with 36.7 nanograms of marijuana in her system. But still, driving okay. I wouldn't pull her off the road, no. No, not yet. Not this okay. Point. After three-tenths a gram of pot, Dylan was doing <laughs> fine behind the wheel. Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> Even though our lab test would later reveal he was driving at five times the legal limit with 26 nanograms of pot in his system. When we got Jeff on the track, he was being cautious and driving slower than he should, which could catch the eye of a police officer on the road. His blood test showed Jeff was four times the legal limit okay. with nearly 22 Let's, nanograms uh, in his system. But again, his driving, while slow, was still at acceptable levels. He, he did real well. We had our volunteers smoke <laughs> and drive two more times until they had all smoked nine-tenths of a gram of pot and they were feeling it. I'm starting to get it, oh yeah. I can feel it in my eyes, I can feel it in my body, in my head. I don't know if I can get, you know, much more stone, even if I keep smoking it. And it started to show more on the road. With a drug recognition expert from the Thurston County Sheriff's Office watching, Dylan started having trouble remembering how to drive the course. Oh, what is this cone in the middle? Confused, he turned early and left the track. You missed oh, oh, shit. Let's do it again. I'll give you a, yeah? second. I'll give you a second chance. Okay. Then, while going through a 20 mile an hour corner, the instructor had to grab the wheel to stop Dylan from swinging wide and hitting our photographer. Watch yourself, watch yourself. I had to grab the wheel to keep him, basically from running you over. If I were to be watching him on a road, I would have stopped him. Jeff's driving also got worse the more he smoked. His backing is very slow. We watched him back over a cone, and after nine-tenths of a gram of pot, he drove so slowly, the officer told us he should not be on the road. Jeff agreed. You don't think you should be behind the wheel right now? Well, I would prefer not to, yeah. After nine-tenths of a gram, Addie was becoming much more aggressive, excited about being high and behind the wheel. One time in your life you get to do this, you should yeah. do it. Yeah. You should do it! <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. But she made no major mistakes, and we asked the officer if he would pull her over. Uh, borderline. We decided to allow Addie to smoke one last time, bringing her total smoked to 1.4 grams. Back in the car, Addie knew she was having trouble. Way more stone. Way more stone. Definitely shouldn't be driving. And she drove with no restraint. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. That was awesome. That was awesome. Less than 30 seconds into the drive, she started backing up and didn't stop until she wiped out a cone. Which would have been indicative of backing into a pole or maybe a citizen on the on a sidewalk. The sheriff's officer, driving instructor, and even Addie agreed she would not be safe if she was on a public road. She would be a danger, yeah. Yeah, definitely that's dangerous. To confirm the volunteers were driving impaired, we treated them like anyone else pulled over and suspected of drug use. No, 
The county's drug recognition expert put them through a 12-step evaluation, checking things like their balance. Heart rate and blood pressure were also checked. They all had issues, including Jap, who couldn't find his nose with his fingertip. I would say that all three would have been arrested for driving under the influence.